In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly. The time has come again. The champion must die. Hello there, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Defend Your Movie. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. I regret to inform you that this week we have, we don't have our pal, Farrah Brook, but I have a very great guest for you. We have a friend of the show. He's done the show already. Uh, we have a very special episode, which I'll tell you about in a second. Our buddy Tommy McNamara, everybody. Just as attractive as Farrah. Just happy to be here. <laughs> That's what they say. It's, like, <laughs> it's weird. You handed me a business card and it said that on the business card. And I was like, what? This, this only works in this scenario. Why do you have business cards just for my podcast? Oh, just as attractive as Farrah. But you don't specify which Farrah, so it could be Farrah Fawcett. It's mostly it be, Fawcett. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and she died, so that's extra morbid, Tommy. Well, that's why I switched to, to Brooke. This yeah, is the yeah, day she like, died. Yeah. You just switched to whatever living Farrah there. <laughs> There's only one at a time, she, yeah. Uh, Tommy McNamara, funny, but also just as attractive as the closest <laughs> Farrah to you. <laughs> yeah, I have an app that tells me the closest <laughs> Farrah to me. It's iFara. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's Uber, but for Farah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, Farah is not here this week, but we wish she was, and we miss her. And uh, we, you'll see her, hopefully, hopefully next week you'll see her. Hopefully that'll happen. I don't know, but we're going to say, uh, I, I should have called, I should have pretended like we had a falling out and like a radio <laughs> yeah, war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we had, for one, I never addressed, I never uh, revealed, I'll reveal it right now on the podcast. We had a, um, a thing, I don't think he was one of the episodes you did. My buddy Pat has a movie podcast called How to Watch Movies the Right Way. And we, uh, Radio War is like my favorite thing ever when I was coming. Mm. I, I was a big radio guy. Like when I was, you know, my 20s and my teens, like Stern and then Opie and Anthony. Yeah. And one of the things you love is like radio wars were great because you're like, they're being serious. You think when like Opie and Anthony used to go against Stern or like they would go against Man Cow in Chicago. You probably know that oh, guy. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. like a big deal, you know? Really nice guy. Though. Really <laughs> nice guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Real sweetheart. <laughs> yeah. Really great. <laughs> anyway, so. We, I used to love that stuff, and I think I, I, I was like my pro wrestling. I think I think I liked it. Yeah, because I'm like I think deep down I knew it was fake, but I, and I think it's also it's it's fake, but it's also not fake because they need it for the ratings of the show, and also they do believe some of the things they're saying, whatever it is, right? Just like wrestling, like just like you know, totally. whatever. So we had a radio war that was for like two episodes. What happened was. We had it with my friend Pat. It was my friend's podcast. Yeah. And they yeah. were talking shit because I called my other friend Clayton, who's on the podcast. I called him like a, a local yokel and I said his name sounds like she's wearing a barrel. Were you here for that episode? <laughs> no, that was and I just not. made fun of him and they yeah, took yeah. that and they made it like they were starting a war. So we went back and forth for a couple episodes, but I never told everybody that like, it was fake. But I think, I don't think people cared. Nobody yeah. wrote in about it or anything. <laughs> nobody, nobody cared the entire time. That uh, we talked about, but I'm revealing right now that that radio war, if you remember it, when I talked about they, them talking about us on the on the podcast, how to watch movies the right way, that was a fake radio war for two episodes, and then I just forgot to keep it going. So, so if you <laughs> got a if you got a team defend your movie tattoo, <laughs> yeah. now might be the time yeah, to look right. into getting it removed. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, if you got a team defend your movie tattoo, you can get into any live podcast for free, <laughs> wow. just like Rocky from the Crypt. Remember? <laughs> Do you remember Rocky from the Crypt? No, uh, you might be too young for that. There's a band called Rocky from the Crypt, which they might be at your Chicago. No, where are they from? I think they might be New upstate New York or something. I'm not sure exactly. I had a buddy of mine who was a fan of this growing up. I'm like almost 40. I forget how old you are again, but you're 27. 27. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're so much younger than me. And um, I uh, – these this band, if you got their symbol, which is like kind of like a crude rocket, like it was just like a – could have been a rocket. could be like just a regular shape. Uh, you can get into every one of their shows for free for, for life. life. Yeah, wow. and people did it like hardcore. People did it. Like, That's awesome. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And I don't even know if they're still around or not. Do you know about them, Alex? Rocky from the Crypt. Yeah, they're uh, they're really good. Anyway, it was their last show that they announced that at. <laughs> <laughs> they just never played again. <laughs> <laughs> they're like zoinks, <laughs> suckers, <laughs> suckers. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so uh, Farrah's not here. We're bummed about that. Hopefully, she'll be back next week. 
Um, radio wars. We had that as a fake radio <laughs> war. Uh, if you get a t- if you literally get a hashtag defend your movie <laughs> tattoo, I will give you. Uh, I'll give you a hundred dollars. Wow! And also, you can get into. You can come in and you can do the podcast whenever you want. And also, we'll make it part of our Patreon. And also, let me let me plug that at the beginning of the show. We have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash defend your movie. We have other prizes on that, but I'm adding one verbally right now. If you if you get that tattoo, I will. I'll get you a free Patreon account, and I will also. You'll get into every live episode we have for free, <laughs> and we have a live episode coming up at Sketchfest. It's at the end of January. It's going to be awesome. We have um, uh, a very, very special guest for the show that you'll find out about very soon. Uh, so thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate it. I wanted to do an episode. It's not your straight up defend because we're doing a classic movie, and you're a dude, and I'm a dude, and I think I don't think it's corny to say this is a dude movie for sure. I don't th- I don't know any girls, even girls that like guy movies. I don't know any who like this movie. I think it's I think it's so far in the lexicon of like guys love this movie so much that I've never heard. I've never, I've never known a girl that was like, I've never known a woman to be like, oh my god, and it, it, it's Die Hard. That's the movie I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. To be like, I love Die Hard. I absolutely love Die Hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is like the prototypical action. Like it's what you think of. It's the first thing I think of if I think of like action movie. Yes, just like. Before, way before Fast and the Furious, which I think is what it is now. You know what I mean? I, yeah, right. Exactly. I think it, I think it set it off. I think it literally. It gave you. Uh, I mean, I know it was like after Rambo and everything, but. It was after Rambo and all that stuff, but you know what? Like, I think it. Those things were like it was the first one that was like real world based action movie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Where it was like, oh my god, this is awesome! It's uh, fish out of water, not fish out of water. What would you call it? Like every man, because Rambo was like a mercenary that was being. Uh, mm. sh- um, but yeah, every man. By the government. In fact, he's just a cop. Because I think the original, from what I remember, I, I could be wrong about this, and call me on it if I'm wrong, but. I think it was originally for Arnold Schwarzenegger Die Hard, no, and it was, was a Commando yeah. sequel, wasn't it not? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it was a Commando sequel, and then they scrapped it and they changed it and they made it this movie. And they got the and at the time it was such a big deal because and you want to talk about every man they got the guy who was like the most romantic lead in the country at that point or for TV because it was Bruce Willis who was like. Every woman – that's why I think it was such a big deal because every woman knew him from Moonlighting at the time. He was on a show. You probably don't even know this, And Moonlighting you? is – it's about getting hand jobs on the beach. It is. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only – is that what your 27-year-old brain that knows Moonlighting? <laughs> yeah. you know, if you want to understand, historically, Moonlighting is about hand jobs on the beach when the moon's out. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the whole show. It was just Sybil Shepard jerking <laughs> off – uh, Bruce Willis on a beach, and it ran for like ten seasons. You can't. You you thought that would run out of steam a little bit. You're like, how how long are they going to have these hand jobs go for? And, and it was just insane how it the writing was just so good. Uh, no, so <laughs> no, it was like a romantic. It was like a dramedy. It was like mm. a, it was like it was like before. Like it was like out of that crew of like L.A. Law and like all that. Yeah, it was yeah. 80s like. Almost like young professional shows, mm-hmm. like Working Girl, but the show. Like it was like, yeah. Which I think they tried to make a show out of that too. Like all these like things that were very eighties, and mm-hmm. Moonlighting was very eighties, and also David, whatever his name was, who the guy, the character that Bruce Willis played, David Ames. Oh my God, how do I know that? That is bizarre. That, that is know. crazy. <laughs> I know that David Ames. I think that's his name in the show. I don't even know her name. I just know his name. Uh, and he was like, he was like a heartthrob. So then to have mm-hmm. him. Be like this badass action hero. I might be wrong on this, but I think that was like unheard of, right? For sure. So then they have this action movie, and then like I, I don't know. I think when I first saw it, you know, there's no rules in the '80s when you were a kid. So literally, I I saw it when it came out. I'm, I think I saw it in the movie theater, and I was yeah, like, yeah. it came out in like '88, so I was ten. I was ten when it came out. <laughs> just looking at that uh, centerfold posted up on the wall. No, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. I was <laughs> oh, just loving it. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. When you're ten, when any little bit of nudity is mm. just a godsend, it's just For an sure. absolute. Any like like um, they get I, some early boobs in that movie. They do. They there's have those two people like hooking up at the party. Yes, and they show her boobs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, and I remember. And then the other one was just the construction workers. Uh, they're playboys that were hanging up, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. that it? Or whatever I don't it think they ever explained it, but there's just a playboy like hanging up in the staircase. Oh yes. yeah, I guess it is. I think it's supposed to be yeah. the guys working on the sense. working yeah, on the yeah. floors. But that's what it was like. I don't know about you. Like, actually, I'd love to hear that because you're 27, so you're like a little bit like, a little bit younger than I am. Like, what was your 
when you started to see nudity in movies, like mine was like, all right, like my dad had the tape for Godfather uh, 2, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and when, when, when Michael Corleone goes to Italy, Apollon- Apollonia, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Alex says Apollina. Apollonia. Yeah. It was Aquafina. And it was Aquafina. It <laughs> yeah. was the rapper. It was the, the Asian rapper from MTV. Is she a rapper? I don't even know if she's a rapper, Aquafina. I just know her as annoying. <laughs> Radio War. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Aquafina, come on. Is that not annoying? Also, your name is na- also your fake name is after a water brand. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's AWK Aqua AWKA FINA. I'm sure she's not annoyed. I, I just get annoyed by that. Stuff. I get annoyed by a lot of MTV stuff, like mm-hmm. ridiculousness and all that stuff. I just think it's so corny. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, Apollonia was his wife, in, and like it's so crazy in Godfather because he goes to Italy to to go. He kills. Was that the first one? Or the second one? Do you know that? The second. For, oh, was it the first one? So it was the first. Godfather, he kills McCluskey. Uh, 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 he kills McCluskey in a restaurant. That's the one where he drops the gun. Yeah, you're, you're and right. then he has to go to and Italy. then he has to go into yeah, hiding yeah. and goes to Italy. And he goes, uh, and he has Diane Keaton in America, but he just gets a brand new wife. Yeah, yeah. In Italy. It's the explosion part. It's yeah, it's yeah, the explosion yeah, yeah. part, right? But uh, my, do you know how many times I rewinded and rewatched <laughs> yeah, Apollonia yeah, yeah. dropping her nightgown? And she has like she and it's so crazy because she has like seventies boobs. Like her her. Nipples are weird. Like her nipples, just like kind of, they're very faint mm-hmm. and they're just very like, they're not like straight up like hardcore nipples. They're like just very like part of the boob. They're very different like, time. It's a different time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. Well, that is like I think the first movie boobs I saw were from like seventies movies, which is weird because you'd think that as time would go on. No, I'll tell you what, seventies. If you ask, they didn't. I read every an comedy once. had boobs in the seventies. Yes. Uh, every comedy did. Yeah, there was a lot of them. And but if you if you, I read an article once where they talked to a bunch of directors, like famous directors, and they said if you pick the best decade to direct movies, it was the seventies. Oh yeah, because the or what you would call independent movies now, those were the mainstream movies in the seventies. Think sure. about it. Uh, even, well, Godfather was like an epic, but it was still taking on a huge topic. But that wasn't what I mean. Like a uh, Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, what? Mean Streets, but I think that also had a limited release. I think that was his, I don't know how wide that was. And then I think when he got famous, that got bigger. When, when Scorsese got famous. But I mean, like, a lot, or Rosemary's Baby, or like, yeah. they were done. They were, like, the movies they were making were, like, like, they were pushing the envelope in, in the 70s. And then there was, I think there was, like, a movement of, like, hey, we gotta scale back this content, and we mm-hmm. have to do the rating system. And we have, I don't know if they had the ratings back then or not. I don't know the, the full story. I'm yeah. kind of uninformed with that. But I mean, like, Think about it. Those movies were more hardcore. And then you get to the 80s, and then the movie that you were allowed to watch when I was allowed to watch as a kid in the 80s, for the most part, were kid friendly movies. And then my dad would take me to like Lethal Weapon or like, uh, or Die Hard or yeah. whatever ones that like. And then Lethal Weapons, there was Patsy Kensett's boobs in Lethal Weapon. That was another one. Mm-hmm. That was Lethal Weapon 2. That was Patsy Kensett's boobs in Lethal Weapon 2. And they were amazing. Well, now I feel like mm-hmm. everything has to be so separated. Like, I feel like back in that day, is like, a movie could be kind of everything. Like, it could be action and funny, and yep. it could have nudity, but now it's like... Now you need, like, is it slapstick funny? It's or either it... Fifty Shades of Grey, and that's the sexy movie you can see. Yeah. Or it's, you know what I mean? Or... Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. I remember there was a kid, I went to Manhattan College for a year, and then my friend had a, I think one of his roommates, it was already like, you were at the age where you could have had porn, like, you could have had, like, porn videos if you wanted. You know, I don't, you know, I don't think I had any. I never, like, owned many. I think I owned, like, two porn videos in my life. But this kid had – his porn that he had was a, uh, a, a mashup, like a collection of all Girl 80s Girl Talk movie. made it. <laughs> what did you say? Girl Talk made it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mashup guy. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. DJ. No, no. He, he had a, a mashup of all the 80s nude scenes. Oh, wow. So it was like – just one of the guys, which is like a really famous one. There's a movie. Mm-hmm. You ever see Just One of the Guys? No, I'm aware of it. Is it? And there's a thing, yeah. really famous th- scene where at the end she just takes her top off and it's full on. But it's not like, a, and oh, it's wow. for a, a couple minutes. Like it's, and you're like, if you're a kid going through puberty, you're freaking out, you know, that kind of thing. So my anyway, dad, uh, my dad went to high school with Mr. Skin. Did he really? I swear to God. Uh, Did he know him or he just knows him? No, they were like school? buddies. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk about this. But, oh, uh, well, make no, sure. No, no, no. I th- it's fine. Are you sure? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I found it. So one day I was in my garage 
and I found a Mr. Skin hat. And I was like, I have to figure out what this is. Yeah, so I just I, asked. Yeah, you know why? Because it can't just be my dad's a fan of the site. Yeah. <laughs> I can't live in that world. I can't live in just that world. a super fan. <laughs> well, not only does my dad go to the site, he ordered a hat <laughs> off the site. The only person who spent money on the merch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like my dad was friends with Mr. Skin. He bought a hat from him, and they just started writing to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh God! <laughs> they met up for lunch. He's like, "You're the only guy who ever bought a hat. You're the only guy who ever bought a Mr. Skin hat. You want? Let me buy you lunch." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, they definitely know each other. And in, uh... in Illinois, uh, in Chicago, uh, in, yeah, mm. suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. And they were buddies in high school, and they kind of like lost touch. Or what happened? I think that they might still see each other once in a while. I knew some story where, like, I think like my mom. Like, my dad didn't want to tell my mom what he was doing or something. Like, there was some, like, people finding out what he does is always, like, a funny reveal. You know what I mean? <laughs> you mean, like, your, your dad didn't want to say I'm going so to yeah, was my buddy from high school. He, uh, he's, he's a, a computer guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's trying, like, anything. But it's, like, the most tame he of, He loves like, movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You trying to show your code? He's like, he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. He, uh, he makes buff. his own money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Film buff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, did some film studies. Uh, yeah. Loves great at editing. Clips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So is that still around, Mister Skin? It probably is. I, <laughs> Alex, very. It probably excited. has an app at this point. I'm guessing. It probably has an app, right? Oh, you're not on Skinder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just swipe whatever whatever nude scenes you want from the movie. You oh, remember? Yeah. You remember Mister Skin a year ago? Jesus Christ, Alex, are you serious? That's so funny. <laughs> I wish they had like a purge of, of email addresses like they did for Madison, Madison, Madison yeah. but for Mr. Skin, I mean, you see Alex's name up there on top, <laughs> A. Brazil. <laughs> and just like proprietor of Showbiz Studios, and you just get shamed out of the show business. <laughs> this, is your, this is your Louis moment, Alex. <laughs> uh, no, so basically, uh, yeah, that was like a godsend when that happened. That was like when he, that was such a genius idea. I'm sure he made so much money mm-hmm. that guy. I'm sure yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. I don't know about a billion dollars, but he probably made, a, he definitely made a few million yeah. because that was- Half of it was on that hat he sold. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was hat. That's a very expensive <laughs> hat. But like, when that thing came out, I remember everybody knew about it. When that, because that sure. was like, at, that was like internet boom times. Yeah. Like that was like when people were making money off the internet and before you had- Smartphones, obviously. So people were like going to just going to sites. So they were they were like it was almost like the difference now between like watching TV on your phone and watching it on on the the on on TV TV. Mm-hmm. Like it was like you would go to your desktop to look up like you would like um what would you call it organically type in www.mrscottskin.com. Oh, yeah, sure. Now you're just literally clicking, 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 clicking all the time. Yeah. So they're trying to get those clicks, but. Back then, you were like, "Wait, what's the address? I need yeah, HTTPS." Take the phone off the line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You were signing on just to go and see these boobs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But uh, so your dad, like, oh, later on in life, you hung out with him after the site was launched. I, well, I think they are still friends. Yeah, I don't know the full story. I'm sure at this point, at this point, he must have sold it or something or ro- rolled I, it over I, I or assume. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guarantee because that actually it wears out its welcome after a while because. Then you have IMDb or you have – what he did is – I think what he did was he gave you the exact times of all the nude scenes of movies well, I think, on top of yeah, so yeah, the yeah. clips and also – Let's say you have the movie. Let's say you have the movie. And you're in a rush. You're in a rush. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't download this clip, here, here's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. here's the exact time stamp of when, For sure. when the boobs or the, the vagina is in the movie. That was like – also, you're right because then they had R-rated comedies, which they have more now. And Revenge of the Nerds was a big one. I was probably mm. the first time I saw Vagina was Revenge of the Nerds. Because I was probably, when that came out, that was 86. I was eight. I saw that movie, like, maybe not in the oh, theaters. Right. Probably wow. on video. I was eight when that movie came out. And 86, I was, I'm born in 70. I'm very old. So, yeah. and that movie, like, when I, that's like, when you're, if you're eight or 10 or nine, say nine, and you see that, that was like that shapes your sexuality. <laughs> like, like it's really nuts. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Jesus, Christ. it is ironic that nerds are the ones who showed you. Yeah, yeah. nerds showed me the way <laughs> to vagina. But I think I just like it's so crazy. Like you wonder, it's like 
You obviously don't want to be like I was never. I was. I'm glad that I was never. I didn't have access to to porno until I was older. Like I feel like now as a parent, it must be so hard. Yeah, for sure. For ki- people to keep their kids on the internet, and they're just being having porn shoved in their face all the time. Yeah. So, and then you know, it's literally like, hey, check here if you're 18. And like if you're at 10, you're like, okay, here we go. That you is, don't know yeah. any better. <laughs> that is the biggest bullshit yeah. in history. The click here. Oh God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Make or it's like make sure you're 18 before you click. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah. It's yeah. like oh good, got it. <laughs> They should do like specific. They should make you take like a quiz based on specific yeah. like yeah. pop culture you would only know if you were a certain age. Be like, teach me how to dougie. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> what is a dougie? What do you, yeah. what do you <laughs> exactly? I know, like, yeah. uh, it's my friend dougie. And then you're like, right, wrong. You can't watch the. Boobs. You're too old. Somehow. You're too old. <laughs> yeah, you're too old. Yeah, you're either seven or sixty. <laughs> either way, get off our site. Yeah. No, so uh, whatever. Not to get on porn the whole time, but that's. I wonder – you wonder if it does shape, like, what you're into. Like, because you see things – I wasn't privy to all that until – I wasn't privy to, like, porno until – I don't know, I was like, I don't know, maybe like 35? No, I'm kidding. Oh so my I was God. Like, <laughs> so I was like, I guess like 15, 14, I probably saw magazines and then, like, I had, I kind of like, I'm glad that I had that experience and I didn't just have as much porno as I wanted at like 10 For years sure. old, 12 years old, because they really, I think it'll screw you up. I think you need to have, be able to be a kid and not have to see that yeah. until you're like, know kind of what's going on, you know? There's also like fun to the obstacle of it. Yes. Uh, I mean, which doesn't exist anymore, but right. I remember like a group of guy friends and I, we went into like the convenience store and we had our friend who like looked the oldest. We were like 14. <laughs> None of us looked as old. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that little mustache. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he had that like peach fuzz mustache. <laughs> and he just goes up and we're all like standing right outside the store and he goes, can I have one of those magazines? <laughs> and he just points towards the porn, like not even naming a magazine. <laughs> and the guy's like, what? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 yeah, you can't even say the can't say the name of the magazine. Could have the named one. Yeah, he probably thought he was gonna get in trouble. He's like, I can't say Penthouse. I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Uh, so basically, what I wanted to talk about today on the show, I wanted to talk about. We have a different episode. Tommy's not defending anything. Uh, it's the holidays, and we mentioned it earlier. Die Hard is like a big part. There's things that are big parts of my childhood. Die Hard is a big part of my childhood. Uh, Back to the Future was a big part of my childhood. Uh, and then when I got older, Seinfeld, which we know from the podcast, because I, I'm almost, I, I'm, I think I made like 30, no, maybe literally, I'm like six Seinfeld references the other day to my roommate, Robert Dean. And I, and I yeah, think I was yeah. driving him crazy, even though he's into it because we're both the same way. But I think I was driving him a little bit crazy <laughs> because I was like making them and he's like, ah, uh-huh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I yeah. just can't not talk in Seinfeld talk. I'm, it's like a little bit weird. I, I'm, I think I'm losing my mind a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, so uh, Die Hard, now there's kind of a new thing out there, and we're not the first to do it. I literally saw a commercial before I came here today, or like last night before I went to bed, that was like a Spectrum commercial, and they refer to Die Hard as a Christmas movie. Mm-hmm. And what I wanted to do is kind of dissect and answer the question, is, we don't have to fight about it, we can be in an agreement and then just figure it out step by step, or just whatever. Uh Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? And you know what, I'll tell you right now. I, I, it's all gonna come down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you an insight that Alex Brazell, the guy who had a subscription to Mr. Skin, <laughs> if you, what don't, he's re- most if you, known don't, for, if you yeah. don't remember him for anything else, just remember him. <laughs> What'd you say, Alex? <laughs> Thank God for Arizona. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. This is, you would do so bad on the Bechdel test, Alex. Uh, Alex Brazell, don't think of him as the proprietor of Showmer Studios. Think that he put his credit card number into the Mr. Skin website. <laughs> anyway, uh, he gave me a bit of insight right before you came, Tommy, that I think it sealed the deal for me. My stance, and I'm going to ask you yours in a second, yeah. uh, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. I, I think it is. Agree. You agree? I okay, agree. cool. Yeah. And for your reasoning, let's hear your reasoning, because Alex gave me a great point, and then we can go... The different scenes and stuff, but go ahead. Uh, I mean, first of all, it all takes place on Christmas on Eve. On Christmas Eve, Which yeah. I think is as big an argument as you can get. I mean, they they use a lot of Christmas music in it. They do. It's about coming home for the holidays. Which yes. every Christmas movie is about coming home for the holidays, <laughs> yeah, pretty right. much. Yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, I, I mean, and then just all the references to it throughout. Like the ho, ho, you know, I have a machine gun uh, now, ho, ho, ho. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that... Um, you're right, but I, but what I want to, and then we can probably ask this, why for so many years was it really not 
can't, why didn't why did only people think of it now? I think you think if it's a resurgence of old pop culture and people are just because the internet we have we have BuzzFeed can only do so many articles. Yeah, so they're yeah, like yeah. all right, uh, Die Hard's a Christmas movie, and like everybody's like, yes, you're right. For and sure. there was probably like that truth that was hanging out there for so many years, but you never really identified it as a Christmas movie. I think partially well, is, it was released in the summer. It was released. That's right. So I think was. that had a big. I bet. It, I mean, if they released it at Christmas time, I bet it would have been an argument from the beginning. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't realize that. Do you remember when it? When was it released? Like, um, not. It must have been like. July yeah, I think it was like August. a July. Cause I mean, it was a blockbuster. You know. Like, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Summer blockbuster. Yeah. I think it's also. I think when you're associating Christmas movies, you're associating them with kids. So like, you name. Ninety uh, percent of other Christmas movies, Christmas Story being one. Yeah. That movie's technically for kids, even though it's haunting and it's <laughs> yeah, disturbing. Yeah, yeah. Did that scare you as a kid, Christmas Story? I, I Did you watch it? being weirded out by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of – I don't think – I think it was kind of trying to be like an anti-Christmas movie at the same time mm-hmm. as a Christmas movie because there's so many creepy parts. Like the part where he goes to visit Santa, that's not like a, a heartwarming <laughs> – Santa's, Santa's a dick and yeah, he picks yeah, him yeah. down the slot. <laughs> if you're seven watching that, don't you hate Santa at for that sure. point? So I don't think it was for – I think that you could say that was kind of for adults, but then it, after, over the years, the adults – that watched it as a kid, it became a kids movie because it was like, well, I watched this as a kid. Yeah. But yeah, if you're yeah. like, if your kid's watching it, they might be getting terrified by it. Mm-hmm. So, but you think of anything, anything else? Jingle All the Way, Santa Claus. Uh, I used to, me and my sisters used to watch, and it was an HBO one. It was Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. I've never heard of that. Oh, uh, it's it's all Jim Henson, and it's oh, great. Fine. And it's all these. They're all otters, and they live, and they have. Uh, they're in a band and they have a contest and it all takes place. It's like really awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it's got to be online, so it's got to be on YouTube or something. So if you've never seen it. Watch Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. But that is like as kid like as you can get for sure. So when you're thinking of Die Hard, I'm you're thinking of like Die Hard's a grown up action movie. I'm mm-hmm. a grown up. But then you think like no, I saw Die Hard the same age I would have saw Christmas Story pretty much. You know? For sure. So you you the argument it's kind of not even an argument. Like we're both agreeing, so it makes it more difficult. But you're right. There's so many. Uh, I think you kind of nailed it. I think also, uh, I think you nailed it with like, it was released in the summer, so we didn't think of it. And also, all those different aspects of it being a Christmas movie. But also, there's no other Christmas action movies. I think Reindeer Games tried. Mm, I, think, I never saw Reindeer, Reindeer Games. Reindeer Games is, uh, you know, it's like there's a, it's a heist, but it takes place in winter. I don't even know if it's on Christmas, but I think it might be on Christmas Eve in the movie. I forget I saw it once, but it didn't do that well as a movie, so I think people mm. just kind of disregarded it. But can you name another Christmas action movie? Well, there's movie? like, they do those like campy Christmas horror movies. You know what I mean? Oh, they I feel like one of those one. will come out every couple of years. Is that like Krampus? Like Krampus or like, yeah, yeah. Right. That's kind of action-ish. But that's not real. Yeah. that's No, Christmas action, I feel like is this has the strangle on the market. Yeah. And then, so I'll tell you a little tidbit that Alex said right before the show, which I think kind of nails it and solidifies it, that Die Hard is a Christmas movie, uh, is, um, what you call it? Uh, he goes, if you consider Home Alone a Christmas movie, mm. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Because you think about it, like, it's not, and that, they almost, you can almost say they make the best Christmas movies. Because they're not beating you over the head for with sure. Christmas. Christmas is the setting for the movie. Yeah. And, but Die Hard, I mean, uh, Home Alone delves a little bit more into it. Because I think, you know, they have, uh, I, th- you know, what is it? I think it's like, they're going away for Christmas, and also mm-hmm. there's a, a presents are involved, and a tree's involved, and all that kind of stuff. But most of the movie has nothing to do with Christmas, but it's just around that time. Well, I like though. Then Die Hard, they don't beat you over the head with it. Like I think someone else says to him, like, "Ah, oh, seeing the family for Christmas." He's never like, "I'm seeing my family for Christmas. I'm estranged from them. Maybe this will bring us together." <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? You kind of like, he's kind of just there. It, it, it's just what it is. Yeah. yeah, right, exactly. And then that's why it takes so long to realize. That's why you're like, for sure. "Oh no, I just wanted to see this." And you're right. It was a summer blockbuster that took place in Christmas. That's so weird. Well, and it's also because it's in LA. It's like you don't get to see any of the. Uh, you don't. You don't get to see snow. You don't get to see like snow. Do you think if it came out now, they would they release it during Christmas? Or you think they they knew it they, because it was such a big? I feel like it's also formulaic with studios where it's like there is a specific weekend during the year that an action movie does the best based on this yeah. many. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's no artistic. They were learning it, it back then too because action movies like that were kind of new. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like you had your Rambo's, but that kind of thing. Like even when. I think they even the original poster. I don't think had him on it, right? 
Yes. That's another yeah, fact. Yeah, I read that. The original poster, I think, was just the building and the words Die Hard. I found an article just talking about how the internet like needs to make content about yeah. nostalgic yeah. stuff. Yeah. I found an article that was like 20 facts you don't know about Die Hard, and it was literally 20 things from the IMDb trivia <laughs> section. <laughs> Just like slightly <laughs> reworded. Somebody got paid fifty bucks for oh, that. Oh yeah, exactly. Sons and of like bitches. Pretty much the same order. Like, I mean, oh my god! How so lazy funny. is that? Yeah, yeah. You get you get sued for that. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, you son of a bitch, yeah. come up with your own angle for sure, or come up with like something else for you know whatever yeah. it is. Uh, let's do this. This will be fun to do the last part. The other thing I wanted to bring up about Die Hard. So here's the thing: we solidified it. Die Hard's a Christmas movie. I think the reason I wanted to do this episode is because I saw people debating that somewhere online or something. Well, I think now it's a thing where now it's gone through the internet cycle where it started out as like a fun, funny point. Yes. And then so many people said it. Yeah. And then other people started making fun of them for that or like being contrarian about it. Or, right. You know what I mean? It just How goes the internet through this works. Big, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now at this point, it's like I don't even know if people think it's true or not. Like, And then it's in a commercial now where Santa, they're watching Spectrum and a word, or no, Dish, T- Dish Network. And he's like, I want to watch my favorite Christmas movie. And then ah, like, yeah. Die Hard. And it's like, all right, now. So then I saw, I literally saw that like yesterday. So don't blame me for being so, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. That's so, the last. Yeah. That's Once the it last. becomes money is involved. Yeah, that's the yeah last. exactly. Yeah. But the more you, like, you really, I would argue, like, if somebody wanted to come in and argue about it, which we're, don't worry, we're not going to do that because it's not enough. There's not enough time to fill. Yeah. It's straight up a Christmas movie. It is. Yeah. It totally sure. is. And now, it's more fun to think of it that way, too. Like, to watch it around Christmas is more oh, fun. Oh, it's yeah, way yeah, more yeah. fun to think of it that way. And it's like, and also it's like, it's, it has a happy ending. So it's one of those things where it's like, um, uh, it's one of those things where you're like, oh yeah, it has a good, it puts a good feeling. It's not, for sure. You know, and also like, there's heartwarming parts, like the part with Al, with, with, uh, when, when Reginald Van, Van Johnson, he doesn't, hasn't pulled out his weapon in like 15 years, and he's the one who like kind of saves the day at the end. He pulls Isn't out his weapon so again. It's funny though that that's like the heartwarming thing, is that the guy. Somebody who, shoots somebody? Well, he shot a kid, and that's why he stopped shooting people, but it's like, oh no, he's finally over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, maybe he shouldn't be over it. He <laughs> shot a kid. Maybe he's trying to quit the force. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Yeah, like, wouldn't it be way more heartwarming if he just put in his papers and opened up, like, a wood shop somewhere yeah, yeah. Yeah, and started making toys for kids? Sh- shouldn't it be like he's, like, yeah. making his penance with kids? Like, shouldn't it be like, hey, so I shot a kid, so I took in, like, four Yeah, so I'm from a foster dad. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, nope, he finally... No, he finally can, can shoot a gun again. He finally stopped whining about that <laughs> kitty murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's hilarious. Uh, now I did ask you to do one thing, where I, but I asked you last minute, so if you yeah, didn't yeah. do it, don't worry. Can you, did you do it? I've been. Th- I have some some thoughts. Great. So you'll you'll go first. This will be we'll the last last ten minutes of the show. Uh, I I I actually I have only a couple of thoughts on it as well. But um, here's the thing. Uh, um, we d- I want to describe what it is. I'm sorry, I have lost my train of thought for a second. No, no. Um, we're talking about we reboot. did a thing. On, if you listen to our live episode, I I we have a section in the live episodes we do called Dreamcast, where uh, we recast reboot a certain movie. I'd like to do that for Die Hard. I don't listen to a, lo- a ton of movie podcasts, so if somebody does this already as a section, which I'm guessing it probably is, <laughs> and I'm ripping it off, I have I'm, I have no intention of that. Like, but it's still a fun idea to do. So if you want to have them, ooh, another radio, radio, war. War. radio, war. Yeah. come at come at me, Aquafina and other radio <laughs> and other movie podcasts, come at me, bro. Uh, so we're gonna do dream. I like calling it Dreamcast because I think That's it's fun. like a Dreamcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I only could think of because I thought of it doing it last minute. So I'll tell you who I'd want. A Dreamcast just recast. If somebody if they did a reboot now, I'd want Tom Hardy to play. Tom Hardy. Tom playing, Hardy's a great choice. A great choice. Bruce Willis. Uh, yeah. John McClane. I could not. I was trying hard to think of one, and that is the best one. I think. Yep. Yeah, and then yeah. I think, as far as the wife goes, Christine Malati from the old uh, 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 How I Met Your Mother, and she's in uh, mm, Wolf of Wall Street. She is the wife, and then. Uh, Wait, isn't Margot Robbie the wife in Wolf of Wall Street? No, she's later on the wife. The oh, first okay. original okay. wife. What'd you say? She's the first wife. She's also the Sopranos. She, no, she's not. Who's she in Sopranos? Christine Malati? Yeah, Who is she? Who's she play? She plays the mom in How I Met Your Mother. Like, at the at last season? Yeah. Um, no, and then, I tell you right now, who's the guy who plays Thor? What's his name again? Um, Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth as the terrorist with the long hair. As Carl. <laughs> as Carl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I was picturing that dude from Fargo would be good in that part too. The blonde dude who sits with Buscemi in the car. 
Oh, he'd be great. He's a scary guy. Well, I, he's scary. I saw him in a restaurant once with Dan St. Germain. For real? We were there. He looks like he's 400 years old. Peter Stormare, that's his name. Okay. Yeah, Is, yeah. Wait, isn't his name Peter Stormare? Stormare, right? I think it's Peter Stormare. I like he's to recast awesome. and cast people older than the original <laughs> actors. That's he would be thing. fantastic yeah. at it. What? He's a fantastic. And then... Uh, Did you have a Gruber? Hans Gruber... I don't have a Gruber. I couldn't think of a good Gruber. Who's yours? Christoph Waltz. Oh! Who I think would be an amazing Gruber. That would be... Yeah, we're, yeah. Like, we're elevating the level of... Actually, no, because Alan Rickman's a really good actor. He's great. But, yeah, but yeah. Christoph Waltz, that's Oscar-worthy... For sure, right? That's an Oscar-worthy Gruber right there. That was the one I got excited about, thinking about it. The black terrorist with the glasses... Donald Glover. Redo oh, with Donald for Glover. sure, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you did, what's your name? Is the wife Gruber? What would be a good Gruber? You're right, Christoph Who's your Waltz. Al? My Al would be uh, probably Keenan Thompson. Keenan, yeah, yeah. Keenan Thompson could do it, or, or like uh, Lil Rel. It's or Forrest Whitaker. If you want to make it really dramatic. <laughs> oh God, no. Or Lil, oh, Lil Rel would be perfect. Yeah, because it's kind of similar. Ah, but, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Holy shit, he's great. I also that I'd role like, has to go to a black guy though, because you can't have a white guy who shot a black teen. <laughs> you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah. Not in this climate. Nope. <laughs> Not gonna happen. What? Uh, well, who was your John McClane that you had? Do you uh, have one? Justin Thoreau. Okay, I like that. Kind of a deep cut. Yeah, yeah, I love. I, he, Justin Thoreau, if you know who he is, he's like the bad guy in Charlie's Angels, one of the Charlie's Angels movies. He plays a cop in he's, The Leftovers, which is why I was thinking of it. Oh, and yeah. And he's really good in that. He's in The Leftovers. He's an amazing actor. Yeah. He's one of those guys, I think, he kind of reminds me of like what Michael Keaton did later on, but he's done his whole career, where he kind of just does what he wants. So he'll, sure. he'll direct stuff, he'll act in random stuff. He wrote Tropic Thunder. He wrote like Tropic randomly. Thunder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I think he just, like, he think he just plugged in. It's almost like how Jon Favreau is. Like Jon Favreau, I think, after Swingers or whatever happened, there's certain guys like, oh, they're just plugged into Hollywood. For sure. And they just kind of do what they want. You know, that's what Franco does too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like they have it's like an art house feel to them as a person, and they just yeah. like, hey, they they're just so great at what they do. It's like let's just trust them to make these decisions. For sure. And sometimes they fuck up, but then like they kind of can do no wrong in a way. You know. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, who would be good for that? The cokehead guy. Who oh, <laughs> oh my god, Ellis. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Alice, that, yeah. her, that guy's name is Hart Bachner. He became Hart Bachner. His name's Hart. Oh, wow. H a r t b o c h n e r. He directed movies after that. Like he didn't really act anymore oh, really? too much. He directed um, uh, PCU. Remember PCU? Oh, the Jeremy Piven. Yeah, 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 yeah he directed yeah. that. Hart oh. Bachner. That's his name. <laughs> Who would be good for him? Jason Lee. Oh, Jason Lee is. A That's great a pretty decent one. Do you yeah, have anybody yeah. for that one? Uh, I didn't think of one beforehand. Jason Lee could be good for that. He'd be really good. But, need, but Jason Lee is too likable, maybe for that. You need like a little bit of a. Maybe like a, I was gonna say a Hayden Christensen, but because he's so creepy. But like no, that's not even good because he couldn't pull off the comedy in that. That's one of the best scenes ever. Oh yeah, John, yeah. John boy. <laughs> Me and Matt Wayne, you know Matt Wayne. Yeah, yeah we of course, re yeah. repeat that those lines all the time. <laughs> uh, well, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Oh uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. Always a fun. So basically, we come to the conclusion: Die Hard is a holiday movie. We gave you a little bit of a reboot. We didn't do a full Dreamcast with the whole live. Because live, we usually do the pictures. which We did it once already. It went, mm -hmm. worked out really well. Aparna did a reboot of... Uh, she did a reboot of Home Alone, actually. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, Tommy, what would, would you like to plug? You want to plug the podcast? Yeah, yeah. Check out my podcast, Stand By Your Band. And uh, if you go to my website, TommyMcNamara.com, a bunch of dates there. So Awesome. And we're at Showbrew Studios. That's ShowbrewStudios.com. They have a YouTube page as well as an iTunes page. Listen to us on iTunes. Uh... Uh, Stitcher, Google Play, and there's an app called Laughable that's great. It's run by this guy, Ned. They have all sorts of... And we're on Spotify. Are we on Spotify? Oh, we're on Spotify. I love Spotify. Oh, we're on Spotify now. Oh, listen to us on Spotify. Listen to us on all that jazz. Um, and then... If you search all that jazz on Spotify, yeah. <laughs> their podcast comes and up. And all that jazz. <laughs> Defend your movie. And all that jazz. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, our Patreon. We have a, a Twitter... A def at defend your movie, a we have an email defend your movie at gmail dot com, and we have a Patreon Patreon dot com slash defend your movie. If you like what you hear, tell your friends. Go on, sign up for extra content. We got T shirts going up. We have all sorts of stuff. We have videos from the live podcast. We have all sorts of stuff. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you again, Tommy, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye.